in cancer. The tiniest proteins do huge damage. So what if we could see how they do it and then use that information to change them? Curing cancer is high priority for scientists. But wouldn't it be better if we could prevent cancer from spreading in the first place? To do that, we need more information about how the body's protein can malfunction, something Michael Landre's team is bringing to light. Proteins are the building blocks of life, really, when you think about it. Proteins are in every cell in the body. They're like tiny robots that build stuff, break down stuff. They make the cell grow, divide, and eventually die. It's encoded in our proteins very exactly how they should do all the things they do. Um, yet, in diseases, these things can go wrong. So, for example, in cancer, the proteins that stop the cell from dividing don't work properly. They don't recognize what they should bind to or what they should do, and instead, they just go wild and the cell starts dividing and dividing, and then you get a tumor. Is it possible to stop proteins from behaving abnormally? Michael Landre thinks so. But in order to change the proteins, you first need to study them in detail. In order to do that, we need to find out what the protein looks like. So if you imagine a robot that you want to stop from doing robot things, you have to look at how does the pro robot work? Where is the important button you have to press? Or can we give this robot something into his hands that will stop him from being able to do things? But how do you study proteins that are so tiny that you'd need an electron microscope to see them? There is another way of determining the shape of a protein without actually looking at it, and it's called mass spectrometry. So what we do instead of looking at them is we weigh them. If you have a protein that binds to something, it gets heavier. And this is something we can measure directly with our mass spectrometer. So what we do is we make proteins, we change things in the proteins, we say, okay, what happens if we put something here? What happens if we take away this part? And we give them drugs to see if they bind, and then we measure with our mass spectrometer how does the structure of the protein change, how does the binding of the protein change. With mass spectrometry, a protein solution is sprayed across the machine. This will separate the proteins from water or fat that normally surrounds the protein. And then we let them fly through a vacuum, and we stop the time it takes the protein to fly a certain distance. Now, if you imagine you have a heavy protein, that will fly slower than a small protein. And in this way, by measuring the time it takes the protein from fly from A to B, we can directly determine the weight. Let's add a potential life-saving drug to the mix. The proteins get exposed to the drug before the proteins get sprayed across the mass spectrometer. If there's been a match, the protein will have become heavier, and it'll take longer to go from point A to point B. We now know that the drug binds to this specific protein, and we might be one step closer to preventing cancer. This is our, one of our mass spectrometers. It's essentially a box with a vacuum and an electric field inside where we can let our proteins fly. So what we have to do now is mount the little capillary with our proteins into a holder. And all we need to do then is use a bit of gas and a bit of voltage to spray the protein inside the mass spectrometer. So now they'll be flying from here over here, and this is where we measure the time it takes them to fly. Try this from a computer, and what you get is a mass spectrum that looks like this, which tells you the time it takes proteins to fly and the amount of protein that we have. And then you can from this calculate the weight of your protein or your protein complex. And the research is paying off. The team is in the process of examining several options, including an unexpected combination. Spider silk is a polymer, one of the strongest polymers in nature, uh, but it's composed of individual proteins. So what we've done is we've used synthetic spider silk proteins that we've produced in the lab, sprayed them into our mass spectrometer, while changing the pH from neutral to acidic, acid-like, because that's when we know um, from biology that spider silk forms. And we could see the proteins going from being two to being four, six, eight, 10, 12 stuck together. So we could really see how this fiber assembled inside the mass spectrometer over the course of a just, just a few seconds. When we were looking at spider silk, one of the most interesting things we learned was that spider silk proteins are very stable. So we wondered whether we can use the same trick that nature uses to make the protein stable to stabilize proteins in cancer. Uh, the one we looked at is called P53. And that's a master regulator. It's the one protein that determines whether a cell will divide or whether it will stop dividing. So if this protein is broken, cells divide and divide and divide and become cancer cells. What we did is we fused a small piece of spider silk to the human P53 protein. And we found that this protein actually becomes very stable in cells. We used our mass spectrometer 
to measure the shape of the protein, we could see that it's very round and globular, like a stable protein normally is, and found that when we then give this protein to cancer cells, they die almost immediately. So it makes this tumor suppressor, P53, much more potent. My goal with my research is to use mass spectrometry to make better drugs, to understand how processes in the cell work. And we can use the specific qualities of mass spectrometry, that it's very fast, very reliable. Uh, it needs much less material, you need fewer cells, fewer proteins to get a result, to look into the processes that are really difficult to understand with other techniques. So my dream is to one day use mass spectrometry as a direct readout of how good are drugs and what do we have to change to make them better. Thank you.